Hello friends, it's Christy Marcotte. In today's video, I'll be making Independence Day cards that I'll be giving to the residents at a local retirement home. The paper collection I'll be using is by Photoplay. It's called Land That I Love. They do sell a collection pack with all the different 12 by 12 papers and also a sticker sheet. But I decided to purchase individual 12 by 12 sheets. That way I could choose which designs to use. Most of the papers I purchased two, so I could use the front and back. One design I purchased three sheets. I like that red tone on tone pattern. I'm not sure if I purchased all of the 12 by 12 sheets that are in this collection, but it is a really fun patriotic collection. Maybe I just missed it this year, but I haven't seen a lot of new patriotic paper collections. So if you know of a new patriotic collection that is currently available, let me know in the comments. I always enjoy using patriotic papers and I'll need them for Veterans Day cards later on this year. The retirement home near me currently has about 90 residents, so I'll need 45 cards. I have a local friend that helps me out with the other half of the cards and hers are already finished. I will be using some card sketches for inspiration. The first card sketch is from Cards TV. This is sketch number 30. And if you are interested in any of the sketches I use in this video, I share all of that information on my coordinating blog post. That link is provided in the description box below, or you can simply head over to christymarcott.com. For the first card, I selected three pattern papers. I have the fun red, white, and blue star paper for the background. For the narrow strip, I'm using some of the red tone on tone paper. And for the featured pattern paper, I have this fun patriotic ice cream treat paper. I layered the background on some dark blue and also lighter blue cardstock. Put my card front onto a card base. All of my cards in this video are American Standard A2 size, four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. I've already stamped and cut out the sentiment, Happy Fourth of July. All of the sentiments I use in this video are from Jaded Blossom's God Bless America stamp set, and I also have the coordinating outline dies. It's a great patriotic set. Using the outline die, I cut out another piece. I layered the two pieces together to create a fun white drop shadow behind the sentiment. Then I put foam dimension on the back to pop it up. Since I'm not mailing the cards, I don't have to worry about keeping them flat. I can add lots and lots of fun dimension. For embellishments, I used some glossy dots from Pink and Main, put two of the largest size in the upper right hand corner. With some of the leftover scraps of pattern paper, I did add a narrow strip on the inside of each card. So there is my finished card and I did make a total of eight. After making the first seven cards, I decided to use blue cardstock for the very background, and I do prefer that look. Now moving on to card design number two. The card sketch is from MFT. This is number 650. I have this fun red and blue splatter design for the background, and there are also some red and blue stars on there. Using some of the red tone on tone paper for the narrow strip at the bottom of the panel. I'm adding a Love from Lizzie Peel Off between the two patterns for a little bit of contrast and shine. This is the ruby red mirror color in the pinstripe style. Since I will be adding a shape on the right side, I was able to use some of the peel off scraps. I wrap the ends around the back, layer this piece on some blue cardstock, then I'll add my card front onto a card base. Instead of the circle that's indicated on the card sketch, I'll be adding a star, and I'm using Paper Roses Stitch Star Die Set. I cut out a large blue star and also a small white star, and the white cardstock has a shimmer finish on it. I'll glue the two pieces together, and I already have foam dimension on the back of the large star. I'll remove the release paper and adhere it in the lower right hand corner. Since most of the background is white, I decided to stamp the sentiment on craft cardstock. That way it stands out more against the background. The sentiment is celebrate the red, white, and blue. I'll cut a fishtail on the right side, then layer that piece on the same blue cardstock. 
I'll flip it over, put foam dimension on the back side. I'm using some thin strip foam dimension from scrapbook.com. I'll remove the release paper and adhere it in the upper left hand corner. The sentiment I'm using is much larger than what's indicated on the card sketch, but card sketches really are just for inspiration. You can follow them exactly or change them up for what works best for you. For embellishments, I'm adding some red gem stickers. These are by Honeybee Stamps and it is a retired set. I'm really trying to use up some older bling. And when I was finished making all of the cards in this video, I did use up five older packs of bling and that made me very happy. So there is my finished card and this time I made a total of 10. The other four cards follow the same sketch design. I just changed up the pattern paper and cardstock. For card design number three, I'm using one of my favorite card sketches. This is OWH number 218. It's a great card sketch for featuring fun pattern paper. I'm using craft cardstock for the background. For the narrow strip that goes across the card, I have more of the red tone on tone pattern. And for the featured pattern paper, there's lots of colorful fireworks. I'll layer everything on some blue cardstock. Along the edge of the red tone on tone pattern paper, I am adding some ruby red mirror peel offs. I'll put a full strip on the bottom, then use some of the scraps on the top, since most of that area will be covered up with the pattern paper. I'll wrap the ends of the peel offs around the back, layer this piece on the blue cardstock, then I'll add my card front onto a card base. Next, I'll add the firework pattern paper, and I am following the design of this card sketch fairly closely. The only thing I really change is the location of the sentiment banner. I've already stamped out Happy 4th of July on some light blue cardstock, cut a fishtail on the left side, and before adhering that piece down, I did add a scrap cardstock on the very left side, and that'll help it stay nice and level. Then I'll adhere it in place using some glue. I left a gap on the right side of the sentiment so I could add some mini star peel offs in white. For embellishments, I'm using some blue gem stickers and I'll put three on the left of that featured pattern paper. I'm trying to make sure to get them nice and straight. For a final finishing touch, I'll add a scrap piece of the pattern paper on the inside of the card. So there is my finished card and this time I made a total of 12. You can see the variety of different gem stickers I use for the cards. For card design number four, the card sketch is from Freshly Made Sketches. This is number 400. For the background of the card, I'm using some white shimmer cardstock. For that wide panel, I selected this fun patriotic plaid paper. Along the edge of the plaid paper, I'll add more of the ruby red mirror peel offs. I'm using the narrowest width since I'm starting to run out of peel offs on the sheet. I'll wrap the ends around the back, layer this piece on some dark blue cardstock, then I'll add my card front onto a card base. The opposite side of the plaid pattern paper has lots of fun Independence Day icons, flags, stars, there's Uncle Sam's hat. So I'll use that design for the featured pattern paper, this smaller square. I'll layer it on the same dark blue cardstock. Most of the time I add an additional eighth of an inch for the cardstock layers. And that's what I did for the featured pattern paper layer. The pattern paper is two and five eighths of an inch by two and five eighths of an inch. And the cardstock layer is two and three fourths of an inch. Although for the background of the card, I did add an additional fourth of an inch since I wanted a wider border with that dark blue cardstock. I've already stamped out the sentiment, Happy Independence Day. I'll cut a fishtail on the right and left side and layer it on some blue cardstock. I'll flip over the sentiment, add some foam dimension on the back side, remove the release paper and add my sentiment on the lower portion of the featured pattern paper square. To finish off the card, I'll add some clear gem stickers. Put three on the right side of the card and two in the lower left hand corner. This pack of rhinestones I've probably had in my craft room for over 10 years. 
So I definitely need to use these up. I was actually surprised how sticky they still are. And the final finishing touch, adding that narrow strip of pattern paper on the inside of the card. So there is my finished card, and this time I made a total of 10. I really like this design with the fun patriotic plaid paper. Now moving on to card design number 5, and this is my final card design. The card sketch is by Cards TV. This is sketch number 17. I'm using the fun firework pattern paper for the background. For the narrow strip on the left side of the card, I have some white shimmer cardstock, and I'm adding a little extra sparkle on the left side of that panel with a Love From Lizzie peel off. This is the silver holographic color, and it's super sparkly. I'll layer the background on some red cardstock, put my card front onto a card base, leaving eighth of an inch of the white card base showing. Instead of the three squares that are indicated on the card sketch, I'll be adding some stars. I'm using Waffle Flowers Nesting Star Die Set. It's a nice variety of different sizes of stars. I cut them out from some light blue cardstock, put foam dimension on the back, then I'll adhere all of them in place on the left side of the card. For a sentiment, I've already stamped and cut out Land of the Free. Using the outline die, I cut out a second piece from some silver holographic cardstock. I'll layer the two pieces together, creating a fun, sparkly drop shadow underneath the sentiment. I did use some double-sided adhesive tape and also glue to adhere those two sentiment pieces together. Since I am adhering it onto a specialty cardstock, I want to make sure they stay in place. I put some foam dimension on the back side of the sentiment, remove the release paper, and I'll adhere it in the lower right hand corner. For most of my cards, I use very thin foam dimension, so it's fun using some of the thicker foam dimension for this set of cards. For a final finishing touch, I'll add a white mini star peel off inside each of the blue stars. And I'll also add this strip of pattern paper on the inside of the card. So there is my finished card, and this time I made a total of 12. The first six will be for Independence Day cards. The final six cards, I use the sentiment, thank you for your service. And I'll set those aside for Veterans Day cards later on this year. As I was making the cards and counting how many I had, I realized the last six cards were extra, so it was perfect to make them Veterans Day cards. Now here's another look at the 52 cards I made using PhotoPlay's Land That I Love collection. I ended up using almost all of the 12x12 pattern paper, and I have enough Independence Day cards to bring to the residents at a nearby retirement home. So that worked out perfectly. If you are interested in any of the products I used in this video, I do have links provided in the description box below. I believe the pattern paper is still available since it was released this year, and I know Jaded Blossom's God Bless America sentiment set is also available. I get a lot of questions about the cards that I donate, and I have talked about it before in other videos, but I thought I would talk about it again just briefly in this video. On the inside of all of the cards, I will stamp a sentiment, and I'll choose a different sentiment than what's on the front of the card. So this card has Land of the Free on the front, and I stamped Happy Fourth of July on the inside. The cards are considered Happy Mail for the residents, so I will include a handwritten message inside every single card. For this card, I wrote Bold Stripes, Bright Stars, Brave Heart. I hope you have a great day celebrating our nation's birth. Sending sunshine and smiles, and I signed just my first name, Christy. Since it is Happy Mail, I will include an envelope. I'll stamp either a sentiment on the outside or an image. I selected a fun firework image from Jaded Blossom's Happy Fourth of July set. And that will help the activity coordinator know that this is a Fourth of July card. On the back of the card, I'll use a custom made stamp. The one I've used for years is Random Act of Kindness to Brighten Your Day. And I recently had a new custom stamp made. The new stamp has Handmade by Christy and a beautiful tulip image. 
And what makes this stamp really special is that my daughter Penny drew the tulip image for me. When I donate cards, there are some organizations that prefer not to have a last name or a website listed. So I had this custom stamp created and I think it'll work perfectly for the retirement cards. To seal the envelopes, I never use the glue since it can be tricky for some people to open them. Instead, I'll add a cute piece of washi tape. And I like to use washi tape that goes along with the holiday or season. For the Independence Day cards, I'm using some Doodlebug Design washi tape with red and blue stars. Now I need to work on filling out the rest of the cards. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.